So for those of you who came in a little bit late, this is 10 Rules of Dealing with Police Encounters. Again, we're not keep you from getting arrested, but the idea is to help you keep getting, keep you from getting convicted. Police encounters are some of the, some of the most stressful events we will have in our lives. Police uh, are very trained in these encounters. We are not. Therefore, we consider it important to reinforce a few things from this presentation. The first one they said, I don't consent to searches. We have revised that to, I do not consent to any searches. That means to cover your car, to cover you, to cover anything you have with you. So let's go ahead and try it out. After me, I do not consent to any searches. Say it again if you said it before. Perfect. The next one is the one to get yourself out of the situation. Uh, am I being detained or am I free to go? And the last one, I can't let you in without a warrant. Just keep those in your mind. Those are the main ones. Now, we talked a little bit about the, um, uh, I, I, I'm going to keep silent. Uh, I want to see a lawyer. This is an interesting one because of Supreme Court rulings over the past 10 years. You actually have to say, I am keeping silent in order to be silent with a police encounter. I'm serious. You actually have to say something in order to be silent. So you do want to say, I will, I'm going to be silent. I want to talk to a lawyer. So let's try that one. I'm going to be silent. I want to talk to a lawyer. I'm going to be silent. I want my lawyer. And then you have to shut up because if you keep talking after you said it, they can still use all that against you. So it's a tricky one. It is bizarre how odd some of this stuff gets. Uh, I had said that I would talk about the identification requirement. Georgia has an interesting rule in place wherein, and, and this really hasn't been hashed out in court, so we've got a real idea of what's supposed to happen. Police can ask you to identify yourself, and the term we've heard is positively identify yourself, or you can be arrested for criminal trespass, and you can be arrested for criminal trespass in your own yard. So uh, the idea is you have to positively identify yourself. Does this mean you have to show them a driver's license? No, a lot of folks don't have a driver's license. Do you have to show them a government ID? Eh, a lot of folks don't have government IDs. So it's, there's a lot of iffiness on this, but you've got to tell a cop who you are. One of the important things is you never lie to a cop. Never, ever lie to the cops. Uh, that means that you are... Um, uh, it's a Martha Stewart incident. She wasn't arrested for actual stock fraud. She was arrest She was convicted for lying to police, obstruction of justice. So you don't lie to the cops. You just shut up and don't worry about it from there. Uh, so with that, glad to answer questions. Some of the common ones we get involved. Yeah, come on up. You got to come to the microphone. Uh, you don't have to identify yourself here uh, to ask your question. Uh, I'll just go Hi, Mike. Pretty drive. Pretty drive, also apparently a lot of yeah. drug <laughs> along that corridor. I got stopped by a canine because I was looking down at my GPS trying to figure out what route so that I could go to Fort Sumpter in Charleston, and I was picking between routes and not paying attention to my driving, and I was drifting off the road like three or four times. Cop canine unit pulled me over. I consented to a search because I felt like I didn't have anything to hide. And just to let you all know, like, uh, the cop is like, um, I'm going to have to search your car further because my dog has scented narcotics and your rental car, which I turned white. <laughs> and um, there was fortunately nothing that they could find in the car. But it's my understanding, and I don't know if I'm clear about this, I just wanted to see if you had any encounters with this, is that basically once you sign that you've received the rental car if there's anything in the car paraphernalia or any any illegal drugs under the seats in the dash in the trunk hidden anywhere that they can find that it's basically your property at that point and you're 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 held accountable for that is am i in the right line of thinking with that or so a bunch of things here yeah a bunch of important uh, issues a obviously you know now i do not consent to any searches everybody I do not consent to any searches. That's period. Uh, yeah, I had a guy coming down from uh, Virginia to join us at a company here in Atlanta. He just bought, this was in the early 90s, he just bought a VW Bug used. 
He's driving into Georgia, hits a roadblock, and suddenly he goes, I've got no idea what the previous owner put in this car. It's a VW Bug. Uh, so utterly petrified about what might be found. As far as police are concerned, if you are in possession of the car, borrowed, stolen, bought, it doesn't matter. What's in the car is yours. Rental agreement, be damned, doesn't matter. I mean, if the, it goes to the rental company, they said, oh, we cleaned it. We cleaned that car out. It can't have been in one of our employees actually dropping it in. So, um, yeah, if, if you have the car, regardless of how you got it, whatever's in it, they will consider yours. Now, let's talk about canine units. So you heard them talk in the uh, video about, uh, I'll search it or I'll call the canine units. Uh, that is a threat they can and will make. In Georgia, and this is kind of a national thing, but definitely in Georgia, the standard is they can't detain you if they don't have evidence for longer than a standard traffic stop. How long is that? Nobody will tell you. They can't tell you if it's 30 minutes, an hour, five minutes. They, they don't know. But they can't just keep you there for hour after hour waiting on a canine to show up. At some point, you're being free. And that's why you keep doing that. Am I being detained or am I free to go? Am I being detained or am I free to go? Um, and I've had canine officers come up here and talk about how they can get the dog to give them a false positive if they want a false positive. So uh, judges are aware of that. We've, d we've actually shown that at previous uh, Dragon Cons, just talking about the whole issue behind uh, canine searches. So just because the dog is saying it, you're still not going to consent. Now the cop's going to say that is his probable cause. And if he says it's his probable cause, you follow the cop's orders. I mean, I, I, as long as it's a lawful order, they're not telling you to shoot somebody. You're following the cop's orders. But uh, you are building up layers of defense with everything you do. There is no one golden ticket out of an arrest or out of a conviction. These are all things you are creating for your lawyer to cast doubt on the police and their stories. Because uh, in the end, it's the, the finding beyond a, reasonable doubt, but beyond a reasonable doubt. And who knows what's going to get the cops to stop thinking it's a reasonable uh, level. So you're going to build up a case for them to dismiss any of the evidence by saying, I didn't consent to any searches. And therefore, you start getting stuff thrown out and the cop's case starts to collapse on it. So um, again, in your situation, you now know what you needed to have done. But if you've got a car, if you're in the house, you're at risk of being considered being in possession of whatever's being found there, even if it's not your house. So, yeah, that's why you don't consent, because you've got no idea what some morons left in there at some point in the past. Uh, we also talked a little bit about probable cause and plain view rules. Uh, this is important in cars. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of riffing off of yours, because that brought up some other questions people often have. People often ask, well, where do I put things in the car that I want bothered with? If you are into alternative lifestyles and you have a play bag, the cop has every reason to think that's a rape kit. That goes in the trunk. The trunk has a higher level of protection than the car itself because they can't look into it. One of the things that cops follow is the idea of the arm's length rule. If the driver can reach it, the cop's going to be concerned about it especially. If it's out of arm's reach, in the trunk, in the back of your hatchback, whatever, then there's less. Ow. <laughs> yes, I will talk. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Damn it, EFF Gestapo tactics. Um, uh, so yeah, keep uh, keep things out of plain view, out of the way. And uh, again, we don't consent. All right, all together now. I don't consent to any searches. I don't consent to any searches. All right, any other uh, questions? Yes, come on up, gotta do it on the mic. You don't have to say who you are, but we want this for posterity. I was stopped at a... Uh I was at a traffic stop at about 3 in the morning bringing a friend home after uh, they had too much at the bar. And uh, cop had, I couldn't decline the cop to search my vehicle. And the cop saw my phone and wanted to search my phone. Oh, yeah. I went ahead and I did not consent to the search. Um, and I've read a little bit about having a password versus biometrics. Yep. yep. Um, I've read certain states that the cops can compel you or a judge can compel you to unlock your phone via biometrics but they cannot compel you via password is that true or false biometrics have a much lower level of protection now forcing you to do it that's a whole different level but yes you've got a lot lower level protection if you're using biometrics as opposed to a passcode 
No, that is absolutely the case. And especially if for whatever reason you're not in a good condition to refuse or talk or whatever, i.e. somebody is drunk or has just been in an accident and is out of it for whatever situation. Once, you've, once the biometrics are in, they're in your phone. Yeah, uh, your phone deserves every level of protection of anything else. And that's part of the I don't consent to any searches. That means your phone, your laptop, etc. Now, some stuff we didn't really get into here. When you're crossing an international border, they get permission to do a lot more than usual. How much they can do on your laptop and, and phone, still questionable. But uh, you can't refuse a search if you are going to cross the border. Um, trying to get into an event like Dragon Con, a private event. If they were to ask you to search, as long as you are able to leave, they've got the right to ask you. And if, if you, as long as you have the ability to turn around and go away, say, nope, you're not going to search me, I'm leaving. If you can't leave, then they don't have the right to ask you. As long as you can leave, they can ask to search your bags. And that's an important safety one these days to keep in mind as well. So uh, yeah, and obviously, for very obvious reasons, don't let them get your phone. Let them search your phone. One of the things that I was seeing a lot with people who are doing these sort of uh, m move your finger along the, um, the dots to do your passcode. I was just seeing the grease streaks. I could figure that out very easily, what their lightning bolt symbol was. Mm -hmm. So again, I recommend actual num numerical code if your phone offers that <laughs> over any other. Answer? OK. Yes, sir. A um, couple of things. One was a, just kind of a joke, and I won't mean it kind of com comically, is that cops are like vampires. If you don't invite them in, they can't hurt you as easily. <laughs> um, well, they can hurt you. It's a little harder for them to hurt you. Yeah, they can't hurt you as easily. That's what I said. Um, the other main thing would be uh, be wary. I think, if I understand, they still have, or do or still have special rules for uh, game commission, game wardens and stuff like that, unless that's changed in the last 10 or so years. So they, we've they, had these discussions about hunting. And what can happen when you're hunting? What can they look at? I've heard that I have heard that, that they can call a game commissioner, and the game commissioner can then, then uh, search your vehicle, even though you refuse to consent. I mean, no, I'm not I know that for sure, but I've heard uh, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, yeah. but that would not be that. We've had this discussion. It's been in reference to guns, mm -hmm. and what can and can't be asked about guns, because if you're hunting federal land or whatever then there are certain restrictions on what weapons you can bring in or use and so forth. Yeah. And I, therefore, I, but, but just, just searching your vehicle, just saying be conscious that's of that constitutional. Uh, I have heard that it has been supported, been supported, but I do not know what the current law might be. No, I mean, FBI can't do it. Yeah. Secret it's Service can. For some reason or other, they think, oh, you've got yeah. you know, so you're allowed to do it. And I do want to bring up something off of your first comment. The, they're like vampires. You don't let them in. They can't hurt you. You don't have to be the one to let them in for them to hurt you. Yeah. If you're doing a party, you control access to your house because if someone else opens the door and lets them in, it doesn't matter at that point. Yeah. They have been given permission. They have no idea that's not the owner. It doesn't matter to them. They now have permission to do it. You uh, keep control over the back door, and this is very common. One cop at the front door, and of course, the miscreants going around the back door. So there are cops at the back door. And if you're not protecting the back door, they're going to try and get in that way. If you are throwing a play party, all of the fun happens away from the windows and away from the front doors. If that door opens and they see something, they now have probable cause. And remember, there is no such thing as consensual assault. If they see someone being flogged, that is a crime. And they will be, that is then, probable cause to come right in your front door. And they've got reason to say that someone's in distress and in immediate need of uh, assistance. So that stuff happens away from the windows, away from the doors, and you have people who aren't idiots watching your front door and your back door. You don't let uh, a drunk idiot be the one taking care of, oh, sure, come on in, because they're afraid they're going to get searched. So you keep control over the access and egress during your play parties and other sort of events. Yes, stranger, what's your question? <laughs> Yeah, what is, this is more of a comment than a question, but uh, if you have a, there may, I'm not exactly sure what, how to do this with Android, but if you have an iPhone, you hold down on your power button for about five seconds or so. This is how you would normally turn it off, but instead of turning it off, click the X, and then this disables the biometrics, and then you have to go back to the password. It also takes everything out of memory, and it's, it, it, it puts it back in a state similar to when you just turn it on. So if you're going traveling, uh, especially if you're going through security at the airport or any other place where you might be searched, this is a wonderful thing to do. It can uh, increase your security because, as you say, 
the, the, the password or passcode has stronger protections in many cases than the biometrics. Right, right. Do not rely on the biometrics there, when they're handy. And I don't know if there's a procedure for Android right off the top of my head, but this is what I can do with the iPhone. Into the mic. I was just going to, I was just going to say that with the Android phone, if you turn it off, you have to use your PIN or password in order to get back in. It won't do the biometrics until you're logged already logged back in. Uh, so if you uh, turn it off, mine, mine just goes to the biometrics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, mine doesn't. Different companies. Well, anyway, turn off the biometrics. Put in a number. All right. So I You've have been a, waiting a few. Yes, I have a complicated question. Let us say you lease a building from a government. Yep. And you have a variety of actors in that, literally, um, in that space. Do the police, because it is a government-owned building, have an automatic right to search your facility? So the question often comes up, who has the ability to give police access? And there is a little bit of question on this. Generally, your landlord can't give them access to your home. So this is decently established, but don't take it as 100% valid, because I mean, they are the owner. But this is your home. You have protections in your home, whether you own your home or not. Ownership gives you a little bit more, because there's not someone else who can claim they have the authority. P if a landlord lets them in, police can say they believe they had valid reason for that search, and then your lawyer is going to have to fight that out. This is true at any level, whoever you're dealing with. Different groups will say they have authority. Police cannot just come in, even in the government building, if it's your home or business, and say, well, this is a government building, therefore I'm in. They need to get permission or have that warrant. Now, so uh, if, the, if they have reason to believe that the owner of that building, i.e. the government's given reason, then your lawyers are fighting out on another level. But just because it's a government building, they can't just come storming in unless they can say, I believe I have, I have reasonable reason to believe that I have been given authority to search these premises. So we, we still have the rights to be safe in our homes. If I want to check your lease. It, it, it still doesn't matter. They still need that permission. The lease might say you have to give that permission, but that doesn't let them search. That means the landlord can evict you. So it's your home, and this is pretty well established. You give that permission or you don't. Are there things to watch out for, for instance, between city cops, county cops, sheriff, or state patrol? Are there differences in how you need to be? A lot of people like to talk about, well, the DeKalb cop tried to pull me over in Fulton, therefore I didn't go. This stuff's kind of iffy. Because if a cop sees a crime, they are supposed to be involved. They usually won't act outside of their jurisdiction, but they're obligated to deal with crimes. So it gets a little questionable. Now, one of the questions you will have is then what are you being charged under? And obviously, if you're being charged with possession, you want to be charged in a place like Clarkston as opposed to, I don't know, Mapleton or something like that. Um, one thing to keep in mind in Georgia, however, is that while we talk about like drug decriminalization, Georgia's only got two levels of crimes. We've got misdemeanors and we've got felonies. If you're convicted of a misdemeanor, no matter what the misdemeanor is speeding, you can be charged a thousand dollar fine and spend a year in jail. Any misdemeanor, no matter whether that area is decriminalized it or not. Now, the, if it's been decriminalized, Clarkson will say, well, our police aren't going to give you more than this token fine. But if you're pulled over by, uh, the uh, Georgia police in there, Georgia State Patrol in there, they're going to charge you under state law, not under whatever Clarkston's uh, cards are. So their jurisdiction is the main difference and what they're going to try and enforce. Uh, but they're all police. They're all supposed to enforce laws, and then they'll decide which laws you're being tried under. <laughs> so they still have the same authority and rules and regulations they have to abide by, even though they've probably been trained differently. But uh, what they'll convict, what they'll charge you under can change. That's the main difference. Yes. Uh, Into the mic. Into the mic. Whenever oh. possible. Into the mic. Well, I don't know if anybody cares. Uh, there's a great video called "Don't Talk to the Police." Oh, it's we did that one here. Yeah. This, go ahead. He's a, he's a Regent University of School. He law is professor. a Pat Robertson lawyer. 
You all know who Pat Robertson is, the crazy, I shouldn't say crazy, the evangelical, the evangelical uh, yes. right mm -hmm. wing, etc. This is a right wing lawyer using right wing examples of why you don't talk to police. Using examples, if you all remember the uh, congressman who got arrested for toe tapping with another guy in a, an airport bathroom. Those are the examples he's using. Yeah, he's using, he basically shows you exactly how it can be misused against you when you talk to the police without an attorney present. Even if it's, it's, and it's, you're thinking, I've done absolutely nothing. There's no way in hell I could be charged with anything. The cops can find that, find ways to abuse something you said, even though you don't realize you said, and said something important. And, and the video is a blast. It's well yes. worth watching. The guy's a trip to listen to. And he's yes. a good don't, speaker. Don't talk to the police. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy. It is yeah. a Pat Robertson lawyer University. going yep. on about why you don't talk to the police. Yeah, fascinating, fascinating stuff. Uh, gun laws are obviously in flux and still changing. We haven't seen those go through the courts to see how that will all shake out. Uh, so um, I can't speak authoritatively right now because there is no authoritative voice, especially in Georgia on what is and isn't allowed under the gun laws. We often have people ask us, well, if a cop asks me if I have a gun, do I have to answer if it's me around me in the car? Our default is generally the, if you're not gonna talk to the cop, don't talk to the cop. <laughs> but I mean, you want, the, you want it to be a safe encounter. He finds a gun, things are getting escalated. So it's your, it's your idea of where is the balance that you wanna share with them at the point that you want to tell them that you've got a gun in your in your back pocket at that moment. So uh, laws have really not shake, shaken out on this. But again, if a cop tells you to do something, you do it. Not an attorney, but again, I would suggest basically refuse, refuse the search and everything like that. Yep. If he says, I'm going to search you, at that point, inform him you have a weapon or something or other so he then feels safer, I guess, about mm -hmm. handling one definite way to do it and uh, again we haven't seen these shake through the courts to decide what the best uh what the best route is on them on them so courts will courts will change things over time so we'll see what uh, what ends up happening with those all right any other questions uh, there are no stupid questions for this one because really the most bizarre situations come up what you saw in the movie those were all real situations the people acting as police were actually police that's part of the fun of that. We've actually had one of those police officers up here. I was hoping he'd be here tonight, but no such luck. Um, no, he's back in law enforcement. Yep, yep, he's back in law enforcement. So, uh, and again, I mean, if you're the one who's been harmed by a crime, you want the police helping you, so. But on the other hand, we want you to always be cognizant of your rights and protect them. So, with that in mind, if there are no further questions, we will go back to the audience participation. So all together now, this time, I do not consent to any searches. Try to. I do not consent to any searches. All right, we're going to be doing the tamed one. Am I being detained or am I free to go? Am I being detained or am I free to go? And uh, let's go to, oh, the quiet one. That's right, right. Officer, I'm going to let's start with, I am going to be quiet. I want to speak to my lawyer. Going to be quiet. I want to speak to my lawyer. And it should be a, a lawyer. You don't want to say yours. A lawyer. And finally, I can't let you in without a warrant. I can't let you in without a warrant. Beautiful. All right. Class dismissed. You all now get your A's. And uh, good luck. And uh, yay.